how much I love soil. It's common knowledge, I adore the stuff. But you know what? There's one thing I love even more. It's mulch, nature's edible doona for your patch. Mulch essentially takes a good thing like soil and makes it even better. It's like putting topping on your ice cream. When used correctly, mulches can actually reduce evaporation from your soil by up to 70%. They can prevent weeds from flourishing and as they break down, release valuable nutrients to your plants and condition your soil. There are heaps of different types of mulches available, so we're gonna have a look at each one. First up, we have straw-based mulches. These break down fairly rapidly, releasing loads of nutrients, especially nitrogen, into the soil for your plants to gobble up. Straw-based mulches are ideal for veggie and herb gardens, fruit trees and patches full of hungry annual plants. It's best laid on top of a damp soil to a depth of about six to seven centimetres, keeping the mulch well away from young plant stems. Now there are heaps of different types of straw mulches, including things like sugarcane mulch, lucerne, barley straw, and my personal favourite, pea straw. It's best to choose a mulch that's produced somewhat locally, and this helps you avoid a massive carbon footprint. When you apply this kind of mulch, it's important to make sure you fluff it up, as this stuff does have a tendency to pack down quite solid and become a little bit impenetrable to water. For the same reason, we don't use lawnmower clippings as mulch. This stuff sets really solid, becomes impervious to water, and actually can harbour a bunch of pests and diseases. Lawnmower clippings are better in your compost bin or in your green waste bin. If your garden has lots of lovely native plants, then leaf mulch would be a good option. Made up of fallen and collected leaves, it's good for low nutrient gardens because it can take a while to break down. On the upside, it's a popular habitat among some of our precious garden critters, like frogs and lizards. You can make your own leaf mulch, but if you bring it in from elsewhere, make sure you're not removing it from active ecosystems. Next up we have our wood-based mulches. Now these can be anything from, say, chunky pine bark mulches to finer eucalypt blends, just about anything in between. Now the thing to remember with wood-based mulches is they don't have a massive nutrient content, they do take a while to break down, which means they're fantastic for native gardens or gardens with exotic plants in them that don't really feel the need for a feed. Wood-based mulches can be laid to a depth of about six centimetres, making sure you keep the mulch well away from the stem of plants. If it's too close, this can actually lead to a fungal disease called colorot, which can see your plant's heads pop off. The other thing to remember is that pine bark and yuki mulches can actually alter the pH of your soil, especially if they're fresh. So it's a good idea to test your pH and adjust with soil conditioners if necessary. When selecting wood-based mulches, keep an eye out for those that have a mix of both small and larger particles. This means that they'll prevent weed growth, allow water to penetrate, and as they break down, they'll actually start to improve the soil structure. Also, insist upon mulches from plantation source timbers like yuki or pine. This means that you won't inadvertently use mulches sourced from our precious native trees like river red gum. Inorganic mulches like pebbles, rocks and gravels are also available, but they do have their problems. They can get really hot, they don't improve the soil structure at all, and they don't give any nutrients to your plants. On the upside, they will help suppress weed growth and they can help minimise evaporation. This type of mulch is good for low maintenance gardens that require little to no nutrients. Think succulents, cacti and native grasses. When you're selecting inorganic mulches, look for builder's rubble, rock waste or rumbled rock waste manufactured in Australia. This is a far more sustainable alternative to rocks and pebbles mined from active waterways and ecosystems. Another really good option for weed suppression is to bung in some living mulches, like these non-invasive native species. Some of my favourites include Creeping Boobiala, like this one and the one behind me, Scavola or Fanflower, any of your ground cover grevillea species, and for shadier spots, you can look at things like your native violets or dichondra. Why not head down to your garden centre and ask for their sustainable suggestions? And, as always, you can check the website at sgaonline.org.au for heaps more information on mulching. <laughs>